Welcome to Jefferson Highlights Community Television. I'm Lori Zook. My guest today is Kim Smith from the Jefferson Animal Control. And I want to thank you for coming here today and helping out the animals. Can you give me a little bit of history about the pound location? Uh, the pound's been there um, since before I was here. Um, it's grown. We only used to have a dog pound, and now it's, we've added an office, and we've also added a cat room. Okay, excellent. Now tell me a little bit about your staff and your volunteers and how it's structured. Who gets paid? Who volunteers? Um, there's one full-time animal control officer. Um, that's myself. We do have several standbys that work weekends and nights um, and are on call. And we do have one pound keeper that works on the weekends to take care of just feeding, cleaning of the pounds. Uh, we do have some volunteers that come in on the weekends. Uh, they help feed, help clean. They mostly help with uh, our pet adoption days and such. Okay, and what hours are you open to the public? Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Um, animal controls on until 4 o'clock, and on weekends by appointment. Okay, and um, other than the animals that come into the pound, what are some of your responsibilities? Because I know that you do more than just take care of the animals that are in that physical location. Um, we take complaints. I'm the one who answers the calls. Um, court cases, abuse cases, um, answer phones, take care of the pounds, adoptions. Okay. Now, if somebody calls in and they complain, say, for example, about, um, about a neighbor's dog running loose, what, what's the process? What happens? Who do they call and where does it go? They would call into the uh, pound. We take the information. We write it up as a complaint. We try to go out and speak to the other people, depending on what you know the problem is. Um, and we take it from there whether it needs to go further or if just speaking to the people will solve it. Okay, all right, very good. Um, is the pound funded by the town or by private donations or both? How does that, how does that work? Uh, the township pound is owned by the town. It's a government facility. It's basically for strays picking up stray animals. It's not an animal shelter where we keep them forever. Um, so that's why it's important that we do have adoptions and get the people in to see the animals. Okay, and what are the circumstances by which you come across a lot of these dogs and cats? How do they come into the pound? Uh, majority are just strays, uh, running loose, we get calls, there's a dog in my neighborhood. Um, sometimes they're abandoned, people move out, leave them behind. We do a lot of uh, cat trapping now, so we get a lot. So you get a lot of the, the feral cats feral that cats. come in and, and yeah. things like that? All right. Um, what if, talk to me about holiday adoptions um, because I understand a lot of times when the holidays come up people think oh I'm gonna go out and adopt uh, you know a cat or a dog what are some of the bad things about holiday adoptions bad thing is you're bringing a new animal that doesn't know you into a situation where there are people running uh, lights going off and on they're scared they're gonna they're not n new to that environment not a good idea um, we'd rather recommend them bring Bring your family in after the holiday when it's quiet. Bring them home where they can get a use and get adjusted to their new environment. So if somebody does want to adopt, what process? Do they fill out an application? Do you need to see the whole family? What happens? Um, we recommend that they bring the whole family in. They can fill out the adoption forms ahead of time if they want to. Okay. Um, they have to come in. We bring the animal out. They see how it reacts with them, with all their family. If they have other dogs or cats, we recommend them bringing them also so we can see how they interact together. Very good. And is there a fee associated or a donation associated with... We don't charge a fee, but we do ask for a donation to help cover the cost of the shots and spay and neuter or whatever needs to be done. Okay, that leads me to my next question, which is to incoming animals, do they get spayed or neutered? Um, it is a requirement of our adoption agreement. Um, if they're too young to get spayed or neutered when they leave, they, are, they have to when they're old enough to get done. We do have uh, a spay neuter program with the state that we participate in, so it's $20 to get it done. It's not a lot. Okay, that's not bad. That's a, a, the rabies is now. There's a rabies clinic also, from what I understand? We hold rabies clinics twice a year, and we're doing ours today. Okay. <laughs> uh, what about adoption days? Is that a specific day, or can you adopt? any day? You can come in any day when we're open um, to come in and see the animals and adopt, but we do hold adoption days where we'll have uh, about three, four hours we're open and we bring the animals out and just have people come in. They can stop and see what's available. Okay, and tell me about putting ID on your pet and why that's so important. 
because I'd say a good 80% of the animals that we do pick up have no tags, have no microchips. We'd rather take them home than bring them into the pound. If they have some type of ID, we can call the people, we know where they live, bring them home, or call them right away so they can come reclaim them. Okay, and what should pet owners, what should they do if, if their pet is lost? Should they contact you? What's the, what's the process for that? Uh, they should call us. Um, they can call the shelter. If there's no answer, they can leave a message on that. Um, they can call the local health department or they can even call the local police department. Okay. And how many cats and dogs does your facility hold at any given time? Because we are a pound, um, we have to take in whatever comes in. Um, we've had 20 come in at one time and to steal, we have to deal with what we get. We might ask other shelters for help if we need to. Um, majority of the dogs, we don't get too many. A couple here and there. Cats, that's ongoing. Right. Well, I noticed when I visited you <laughs> earlier this week, you seem to have an awful lot of cats. Is it kitten season? Uh, it's kitten. Pretty it's much? starting kitten season, yes. Wow. Okay, so that's why it's very important, I think, that people spay or spay neuter, neuter their pets. Because yes. <laughs> if you don't do that, then there's going to be a lot more of them running around, right? Right. Exactly. Um, how many cats and dogs come into your, your facility on an annual basis. Can you even venture to, to guess on that? Last year we probably roughly took in, I'm going to say about 350, 360 animals. Wow, that's an amazing amount. Do that's most it. of those animals get adopted? Majority of them do. There okay. are some that we do euthanize. Um, feral cats, depending on how bad they are, we, we don't place them. Um, a lot go to rescue groups. They help us out. Okay, so yeah, you, that's an amazing amount of uh, animals. Tell me about some of the, the cats and dogs that are currently up for adoption. Uh, we have plenty of kittens coming in. Well, I'm sure we're going to be getting just about every color. <laughs> okay. Um, we have plenty of adult cats available, um, friendly, just need good homes, need to get fattened up. Dogs, we have a, a, a Roddy mix right now, we have a, a Retriever mix. Um, we do have an older hound that's available. Okay, and are they all evaluated for their temperament when they come in? Is that how you yes. decide what's going to happen? Yes, they, they all give an aggressive aggression test, um, and we also try to test them with the food, and we do have a vet come in that will evaluate their health, give them necessary shots. If they need medication for something, we, we also do that. Okay. Um, if somebody wants to adopt a pet, they're just gonna, they're basically gonna contact you, bring in their family, check out whatever's available. So you would bring the pet outside and they would all see how good that cat or that dog is. I'm right. assuming that's a bigger issue. I noticed you seem to have a lot of larger dogs and you tend to get a lot more mixed breeds than, you know, full yes. breed. Most of them are mixed breeds. Um, okay. And what kind of events do you do? I know you said you do adoption. Do you do any type of special things or meet and greets, or you can't really do that because it's more of a government facility? It's more of a government facility. Um, we do have a volunteer group that it has started up, and hopefully in the future they'll be doing more. Um, we do have a lot of scout troops that help us out in town. They do a lot of donations. Uh, we just recently had older girls come in, and they put signs up for us and made all new landscaping. So. We do get a lot of help that way. Right, and recently on the show we had um, Nikki Russo, who was a Girl Scout, when we did a Girl Scout show, and I know that uh, I guess they're earning their silver award. Right. So what do the Girl Scouts do to, to help you? Uh, they're the ones who actually built the signs, okay. and they, they put them up there. They came a few weekends ago and put the signs in, put the landscaping in. Um, they're going to come back. They do did a great job with donations. Great. And what's your wish list for for your facility? What do you, what would what would you want if you could have it? This time of the year, we can use anything for cats because we do get very busy with kittens, um, cat toys, canned cat food. We use towels, um, cleaning supplies, anything like that. Great. Excellent. Well, thanks for joining me, and and we'll be back in just a moment on Jefferson Highlights Community Television. I'm Kate Terrace, Horticulture Volunteer Program Specialist for the Morris County Park Commission. Today I'd like to talk to you about my Horticulture Hands-On Gardening Program, Garden Works. The object of the Horticulture Volunteer Program is to introduce our community to the beautiful 
public gardens in Morris County. One of the best ways is by becoming involved in the improvement and maintenance of these special places. Our horticulture volunteer program is just a thing for people who love to garden. It's a hands-on program that combines planting and maintaining the gardens while simultaneously receiving great tips from experienced gardeners. For just a few hours each week, our horticulture team is offered a unique experience by working with plant material and learning what it takes to maintain a variety of gardens. It is a great way to have fun while doing something rewarding and a chance to get to know other gardeners with similar interests. Tools and equipment are provided and many workshops on pruning, planting, and general garden care will be given throughout the season. Now remember, there are opportunities to work on other horticulture projects. These include the Index Seminum, which is our international seed exchange, our plant propagation, indoor and outdoor container gardening, and contributing to our horticulture volunteer newsletter, Garden Works. Just to let you know, the Garden Works welcomes the valuable assistance that corporations and groups have given over the years. The benefits are many. One, you give your staff the opportunity to share in teamwork that is both fun and personally rewarding. Two, experience the specific gardens of the Morris County Park Commission that are in the range of individuals' interests and abilities. Three, combine a sense of real purpose in the com completion of projects with team members while contributing to the beautification of our county. The tools and equipment are also provided and qualified horticulture staff members will provide training and work with the group. A brief orientation will be given before the garden assignment begins. If you're interested in participating in this exciting program, please give me Kate Gutierrez a call. You can reach me at area code 973-326-7266. We hope to see you in the garden. This is gardening at its very best. Thank you. Welcome back to Jefferson Highlights Community Television. I'm here with Kim Smith, and we're talking about um, the Jefferson Animal Pound. And I want to go right into um, volunteers, which I think are, are very important. A lot of people don't realize that you, you do have some volunteers. Right. How many do you have, and do you need more? Um, right now, we probably have six to eight that are consistent volunteers. Um, they're in the process of trying to get an organized group together and actually go through and get their bylaws written and, and do all that. So we can always take more. Um, a lot of younger people like to come volunteer. They can't actually go and clean cages because they're not allowed to handle the animals at, at that age, but they can come help. Um, clean up for adoption days, uh, bring cages out, move things around, um, advertising. Okay, and do they, for the example with the dogs, do they walk the dogs at all or anything else specifically that they, that volunteers can do? So we have some that are dog people that just like to come in and walk dogs. Um, we do have two people that come in just about every weekend and take the dogs out one by one to walk them. Um, not all of them like the dogs, they like the cats, and so we have some people that come in and will come in, socialize, take them out and, and play. And Right. Well, I think one of the problems I saw with the, the bigger dogs is they tend to be more rambunctious because yes. probably people didn't do their homework and do their training. And a lot of the dogs are probably going to need some type of obedience training, which I think people have to realize when they're uh, adopting a pet. If it you know didn't come from right. a home, that's probably why it was given up. Would you right. agree on that? Yes. Or? That's the majority. Tell me about some of the success stories. Do you get anything back from people that have um, adopted from you? Yes, we constantly, we get pictures, we get postcards to let us know how they're doing. Um, we get Christmas cards of pictures um, just to let us know that, you know, they're doing how they're faring at home, at their new home. That's great. And what do you find most fulfilling about what you do? I know you've been doing uh, the animal control officer job for a long time. There must be something to it if you've been doing it for so long. So what what do you get out of it? I enjoy um, the job itself. It's interesting because every day is different. I don't go out on the same things. Um, I'm out in the field a lot, which is nice. I get to go out and um, patrol, you know, deal with some complaints. But it's nice to go out and make sure the animals are being cared for. Um, a lot of winter things. We get a lot of calls that, you know, my dog's, this dog's being left out. So we go and make sure that they are being cared for properly and that's fulfilling that knowing that you know there's not animals out there freezing to death when it's sub-zero weather and yeah that's that's important tell me what are what are the laws in Jefferson Township um, re, you know regarding 
food and shelter, especially, you know, can the dogs be chained outside? Must, what, what do they have to have? Um, dogs can be tied outside. Um, they do need to have proper shelter. They do need to have food and water. Um, there are certain things, you're not allowed to put a choke collar on a dog. A lot of people think, you know, that's the thing to do, but they can get hung up very easily. Um, it'll grow into their skin eventually if you let it go. Um, there's, we have a whole list of different dog ordinances, but depending on what, you know, humane-wise, uh, cruelty-wise, um, basic dog at large, a lot of people just think in the springtime we open up the door and let the dogs go, and they end up getting hit by cars, infested with fleas and ticks because they're allowed uh, to run loose. But there are leash laws in Jefferson There are leash Township. laws, yes, and we do license uh, dogs, we do license cats now. I saw online that you can actually download, I believe, the, the dog application right now, but not the cat application yet. Right. So at least people can, can register, and I'm assuming that there's some type of a fine if you don't and the dog gets loose, and right. it's basically impounded. The dog can be impounded, um, which they'd have to come to us, reclaim the dog, they're going to have to pay a fine to get them out, um, board, they're charged board for however long the dog is there. Okay. And we were talking earlier about what kind of supplies you need, and I know you talked about the cats. Do you also accept things like toys, tr uh, treats, you know, blankets and towels, things like that? Yes. And can you use things like gift certificates as well yes, from we lo can local use, pet stores? We can use anything. Um, gift certificates, goodies for the animals that are there. Um, just about anything we, we take. Wow, and what about sponsoring? Um, can people sponsor a specific pet? Yes, we do have some. So once in a while we'll get an animal that needs extra medical care, um, things that are gonna cost maybe a few hundred dollars. Um, if people are willing, they want to, they come in, they feel sorry for a particular animal, they can donate money to the particular vet that's treating the animal and that money will go towards treatment for that dog or cat, whatever it might be. Okay. And this way, when they're fully, you know, not sick anymore or whatever, we've had a few that um, broken legs that we've had done where they have to go through a lot. different treatments. So once they're done, they can be finally placed for adoption. So people can sponsor, sponsor a pet that a pet. way. Well, talking about broken legs and things like that, um, I understand you have a couple of veterinarians that work with you. Can you tell me about each one of the vets that works with you and how they help you out? Um, sure. <laughs> uh, we have Dr. Karen Dashfield. Um, she's the vet that's in charge of our di disease control at the pound. Um, she comes in, usually this time of the year she'll come in every couple of weeks because we're a lot busier. Um, we test the kittens for feline leukemia, we give shots, um, we will do some of the, she can neuter the males there, so we do some cats there um, to get them done. She tells volunteers what procedures they need to follow, um, advise if something comes in, what we should do. If she sees something that maybe she feels should be dealt with a different way, she'll put that up. Okay, as well. And now she's a mobile unit, I believe, yes. Dr. Dashfield? Yes, she comes, yes, she comes out right to us, so it makes it a lot easier. A lot more, a lot more convenient, uh, convenient for you. And what about um, Dr. Ashman? Um, Dr. Ashman helps us out a lot. We get a lot of our medications through him. Um, we do a lot of the state spay neuters. We send people to him. Um, once they adopt, we'll send them down there because a lot of times we like to get them done ahead of time before they actually go home. So we will send the paperwork to him, have him do the spay neuter, and this way they're, fin they're totally f done whatever they need when they go home so we don't have to worry about them not getting it done. Right. Now, can people, if they want to donate, can they also donate directly to the veterinarians towards yes. that fund? I think at the end of the show, what we'll do is we'll run their phone numbers. So if people yeah. want to make a direct um, donation to the vets to help out, that might be a good thing as well. Um, your kids, I know, are also involved a little bit, right? Yeah. They help out. Why don't you tell me about what, what they help you do? Uh, because I do have to work. Um, some weekends and holidays we do cover. I do make them come down and help once in a while and they learn how to handle animals, they learn how to clean, um, they do paperwork for me. So they, they get a little bit of what the job's about. Right, and now, do you ha are you involved with the schools at all? Do they help out or do any programs or, or could they? We do some um, programs for Oak Ridge side. They do a called Safety Town 
um, for the kindergartners. I go in and just basically teach them how to be safe at the bus stops. If they see a stray dog, if they see um, wildlife that raccoons that might be out that how to do what they should do or if they're bitten by a dog who should they tell what they should do you know so they can so you're covering the educational aspect of it and I think also it's probably important if you're dealing with uh, a larger pet too that the kids need to respect yes. the pet well even if it's a small pet because any pet can can bite if it's teased right. or, or, or tortured so you you want to I would assume teach them to respect teach those animals to, as well yes. Uh, now tell me, I understand that there's a pilot program for the state. Can you give me a bit of information about that? It's a clinic that is funded by the state. Um, it's called. It's in Hillside. It's People for Animals. Um, we've used it several times. It's a great deal. Um, you can take your cat or dog down there, have them get a physical, they get their shots, they get spayed or neutered, and it's for one price. So it's it's definitely it's, worth the trip to Hillside to to have that done. Now is that done just for government f facilities like Jefferson Township? Anybody or? can go. Anybody who lives in the state can can use that. And when you get in a, a pure breed pet, I know you said earlier you work with some of the rescues. Do they what happens? Do they contact you and you turn the dog over to them or? Usually or? we will contact after we hold them for seven days. We will contact different rescue groups to let them know that we do have a particular breed in our pound. And what they will do is call up their people and try to get somebody to take it out of the pound and foster it so they can have it at a home situation and do an evaluation on them. And, and if it needs medical treatment, they usually will do that also. Okay. And I know when I visited your place, you had um, a lot of extra land that I think belonged or the state now owns or the township now owns? The township now owns. Um, hopefully we're going to be putting in a dog park. Um, for local residents to come, it'll be gated in, um, so you can let your dog run in a secure place and get some exercise. And it's also we like to use it for the pound, so we can take the animals out of the little kennels and bring them in, so they can get some exercise and run off some of the energy that they get right. from sitting inside of a kennel. I think um, if people maybe people don't even know that the animal pound even exists because it's it's hidden it's behind hidden where. It's on Mini Sink Road behind the health center. Um, there's a big salt dome. We're behind that. Okay, and I think if they see what the actual facility looks like, and maybe come by and and visit, they may go home with a you know with a really <laughs> nice pet. But I know that um, if the public is a little bit more aware about you know who you are and what you do, uh, maybe they'd be a little more concerned. And and hopefully they'll help okay. out and donate a lot of things you know to help you guys out. Um, are there any plans at any time in the future to to expand the facility the way it is now? Um, right now we are looking into putting up an isolation room. Um, that's one thing that we do not have if we do get an animal that is sick, especially cats. There, there isn't really a place to totally isolate them from the other cats and with cats one sneeze and the entire room will be sneezing. So that's something that we're looking to do this year. Okay, and I know you're one of the few government facilities or, or government animal pounds. Why is that? What happens in New Jersey that they're not all, that each town doesn't have its own facility? Um, most of them are just going private. Um, they contact out with other townships or they will go to local vets instead of keeping up their own facility. Um, the problem with that, the vets at a vet clinic, the animals aren't seen as often. Um, it, it's not close to town. Some towns use one shelter, so it could be a 30-minute drive to get there. Okay. Um, so you're not getting the access. If it's just Jefferson, you know, the people can go right to our own pound, and they don't have to take a, a hike to go right, reclaim their else. animal. Or, exactly. And also, and vets usually are seven days. That's all that they hold, where we usually hold the animals a lot longer and try to place them before we euthanize. Okay, and before we close, just tell me again, what is your actual address and what is your phone number where people can reach you? We're behind uh, 57 Mini Sink Road, which is the health center. Um, our phone number is 973-663-3241. Okay, and do you have a website location where people um, can We are find on petfinder.com. Okay. All right, very good. So hopefully some of our audience will uh, give you a call and come out and look. Thank you very much for joining me today and, and 
you know, giving the, uh, the public what they need to know. And thank you for joining us on Jefferson Highlights Community Television. I'm Lori Zook.